these years later, no one has found it. Tusk of Ganesh. No wonder the whole solar capital was ransacked. Their loss is our gain. A thief? You're working for a thief. Everyone's gotta make a living. You're gonna sell me out, don't you? Let's get one thing straight. This is a live gig. You want your share? We say bye bye loads. What's it gonna be? Sarb is getting a head start and we need to hurry. We? Oh. All right! I can't let a Sarb get that task. I will incite my civil war. Stamp out the bloodline of the young king. Start oh. with you. We're always trying to do something. We're always building on our technology. We're always pushing what our technology can do. That open world space that we have is a great feat for us as a studio. And really the goal with the uh, Western Gats area was to create more choices than we ever had before, where you can choose wherever you wanted to go at whatever time and how you wanted to approach your combat. There's big spaces you can put through the angle, entire encounters you can skip completely. So it was exciting for us and an exciting challenge for us to try to build something in a non-linear way. We had to make sure that like whenever you got to a certain area, depending on where Chloe and Nadine were in their relationship, in a lot of areas there are three different versions of the uh, dialogue and not just saying the same things regardless of how they get there. It's not a modern structure, so we're definitely on the right track. I don't feel like the world's done yet. I think there's such a great cast of thieves, hustlers, warmongers in this world. You know, I think there is a lot to choose from. Well, we've shown a little bit, just a little bit of what we have, and uh, I think people are going to be pretty excited. to take in, kid. Where do I even start? You've been out of the game for a long time. Maybe I need to remind you the kind of people we'd be crossing here. Sully, I know the risks, but come on, it's a surefire plan. <laughs> yeah. If there's one thing I've learned in all these years, it's there's no such thing as a surefire plan. I don't really have an option here. You know that. Yeah, maybe you're right. I've been out of the game, but I need back in. So can I count on you? One last time. All right, kid. Let's go do it. One. Early on, these emails would go out, like, from the character team, and they'd send these videos, and they'd show, like, what they can now do with the eyes, or what they can, like, now get sweat happening on the skin, when I'm just like, this is ridiculous. And kind of super rad. Watch out! To see what Uncharted on a next-gen console is going to look like, that was a question we just had to find out for ourselves. I think the biggest design thing that came out of the new hardware was literally just the bigger spaces. We have bigger levels than we've ever had before. Maybe 10 times the size, at least, of explorable space. The challenge for us is, and I think that's been super hard, is like, how do we give you more choices and make the pacing feel just as intense as when things have been more linear for us? It does introduce challenges as far as telling a very specific story. We still have point A to point B, just have different branches now to get there. So you've got three or four different ways to get there, but you still have to get there. Now, the complexity comes from every one of those ways has to be thought out and well-designed. 
and we were able to kind of stick by kind of a core tenant uh, of I think of what Naughty Dog's art is all about, which is this handcrafted, this very hand placed, this very very directed every step along the way kind of composition of art. We let you have a lot of choices, but it's like it's moving forward at a, at a very fast pace. <laughs> being able to make the world so much bigger than we've ever been able to make before and then also at the same time improve the detail of any one area so we've increased the, the density of detail and the size of the world all at the same time so with larger worlds comes larger possibilities and larger possibilities usually mean more detail in fact that's one of the things that we're really shooting for in this game is a higher level of detail on the playstation 4 and the experience for our gamers so the resolution uh, involved in that requires a lot more work and a lot more thought and a lot more time. It's not just eh, any old dirt will do, it's a very specific dirt and how wet is that dirt, how many pebbles are pushing up in that dirt, and you take that consideration and you apply it to everything, everything. One of the things that I think improved the most from Uncharted 3 to Uncharted 4 is texture resolution. Bigger texture means more detail. The new hardware just allows us to achieve what we were trying to achieve the whole time. That's just believable via complexity. There's a lot of just passion into all these small, small, small details that really shines through. And it's because we really empower people who care to make the difference that they want to make. Nathan Drake in-game has at least 11 to 12 alpha. And that's just for Nathan Drake. Think about, we have Elena, we have Nadine, we have Rafe, we have Sully, we have Drake's brother, everything suddenly needs a level of thought and scrutiny that you didn't have to do before. It makes a much more rich experience, a much more immersive experience, but it takes a lot of time. Just the quantity of, of interactable things in the environment. I mean, we really want our jungles and our environments to feel alive. And being able to have hundreds and hundreds of objects that can be destructible, it's moving around, it, it impacts gameplay in that, you know, your cover can be destroyed, so you have to move around more. But even outside of that, just seeing all this stuff happening, it, it, the, the screen is so much more alive. The world is so much more alive. Everyone here respects the craft of making a video game, and that why shouldn't every part of this game be the best thing, the best art, best, you know, have design really be, like, serious, considered design and crafted experience for the player. And, uh... Once that kind of gets into the DNA, it, it kind of takes over everything. And, uh, you know, everybody from the very top to the very bottom, we do have a structure. We're, we're flatter than a lot of places, but we do have a structure. But everybody listens to everybody. And if somebody has a fantastic idea, they're encouraged to just shout it out and people will listen. That feedback, it's welcome and it's encouraged and we want that because that kind of format is ultimately going to challenge all of us and challenge everybody to say, like, can we do better? What's most important is when you stand back and you look at the whole, um, and when you're running through the level, um, and you're experiencing uh, and, and playing through the gameplay, the environments, the characters, the art, it's all there to just support the, uh, the experience. It's, it shouldn't stand out as the experience. really an interesting challenge like if we do our job right hopefully people are not going wow that's great animation they're just engrossed and they're believing it <laughs> i think we lost them hey Nate, we can never ever come back to this add it to the list the biggest change we've had in Uncharted 4 would be the use of the head cams and the facial markers, facial animation. For the first three games, this has always been hand animated. Now we're in a unique situation that we're now capturing those actors' faces and we're getting all the great details that that brings in and then we inject the look and feel that we've come to expect from the characters that we know. Every animator that we hire at Naughty Dog has to be um, really good with working with motion capture because a lot of their job will be doing that but they also have to be a really really good animator because when we do need to animate something that we can't capture it has to look exactly like something that we captured yeah can I help you yeah I'm uh, looking for my little brother 
Sam? Just to see you again. Sam. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> Last gen, you'd actually get a black frame between gameplay and cutscene, which would mean it kind of takes you out of the experience. It's a little tell. Okay, now it's just I'm watching something. So that's been a huge thing that the PlayStation 4 has allowed us to do, that all of our cutscenes are now in-game. What it boils down to is blurring the line between when, when do we you know, make this a pure cinematic moment that, that you just sit back and, and enjoy versus actually saying no. We need you. We need you right now. Do your thing. People don't only want to watch passively a story. They want to be able to participate in it. I think the focus, as always, is what serves what serves the story. And traditionally, and, and this isn't really different, uh, we try to keep as much of the big action in the hands of the player. So it's not something that you finish something in the game and then get to watch. It's something you get to experience. You, you reach that point yourself. What we're trying to do is make them richer, uh, make them more playable, give the player more options within uh, those set pieces. So to have like a really interesting combat encounter with a lot of different options and a lot going on within a set piece that's falling apart all around you. The, the gameplay, the environment, the music, everything is coming together to make you as the player feel like you're Nathan Drake and to feel like you're on this grand adventure.